Hello everyone, this is Bernina Jeff at High Fashion Sewing Machines and today we're going to do the FTCU Club for September 2021 and I'm going to show you some of the new features in the word play uh, subroutine and also some of the uh, ways to move around your screen using the magnifier and some other nudge the control and your arrows so this will help you a lot on um, basically just selecting and moving things around so here we go um, if you want to see Trevor explain the new features of this uh, is this icon right here word play it's kind of like a square on point uh, go to uh, Floriani Club, the R&K Club, and then into the uh, updates, and it's in one of the newer updates that were done in, in July. So we're going to go ahead and get a new workspace. So I'm going to hit this blue piece of paper, and we'll get a blank workspace. And we are going to play around with the word play. So don't get it confused with font play. That's different. So we want to slide over to this purple box on point called WordPlay and left click on it. And once this populates, uh, we will have the option to pick a shape. The default shape is the apple. I'm going to click down and I'm going to scroll down to, I have six different sewing machines. So let's do sewing machine 06. So this gives us the outline it's going to fill. I'm checking the size of it right now, so I really want it to be about a four and a half inch size. And it will keep the aspect ratio the same because that box is checked. Uh, leave all these boxes the same. Now, what's changed on WordPlay, if you've used to divide up your words by commas, now you divide it up by hitting the enter. So let's type in some sewing words. So I'm gonna type in, uh, thread Then I'm going to hit enter and then I'm going to hit needle and then I'm going to hit enter again I'm going to hit sew I find it's it's good to put some shorter words in there like three and four letter words because they fill in the spots on this really nicely uh, the longer the words it, it has fewer places to put them so let's put in bobbin all right and then let's pick a uh, font that might be good. So let's do this one. It's called Forward Script. And I'm going to leave it at the default, the 0.79 of an inch high. I'm going to leave the paths at the 200. That's the default. The maximum colors is at 15. You can change that to as little as one, up to as many colors as you want. Uh, minimum, this is a percentage of this 0.79 inch so 10% of that is a pretty small it's like a quarter of an inch so it's going to use a running stitch there at 100% it's probably going to use a satin stitch and I'm going to leave it at this angle this random angle and now when I hit generate uh, this is time you can go uh, get a cup of coffee or whatever it takes a little while for the software to generate this so be patient uh, it's no bit you know it's going to do one path and then it's going to grow the the uh the bar again uh, what i like about this is you can actually you can actually make your own um shape and i'm going to show you how to import that to the wordplay shapes here after we get this one going um, but my daughter um for christmas i'm going to make her a towel with some sort of shape with a lot of inspirational words in it so I'm gonna make a gift for her out of using this and uh, you know depending upon how dense you make the lettering and everything else you know it'll be really nice on either a terry cloth towel or maybe one of those uh, you know just the, the uh, muslin type towels you know the uh, you know, word escapes me however so it's getting close we're almost finished generating this um, and once it generates, you can actually try another type of spacing or script or font you want. And uh, you can uh, actually audition it. So here's this guy, it looks pretty good. 
And if I were to do another one, you'll have undo and redo will eyed up here. So you can toggle between the two. I just don't want to spend the time and just sit there and watch it generate. So I kind of like this. It's filling nicely. So again, you know, I used some shorter words and longer words so it had a good chance to fill it nice. So I'm going to hit OK. It's going to put it into my workspace now. And uh, you could actually look at this 3D view um, in where we generated it or right here. So we have the outline of the sewing machine is still artwork. So we have to pick the type of stitch we want for that sewing machine. And if we want to hit this in a 3D view, this is what it's kind of going to represent in the 3D. I'm going to work in the non-3D view. And I'm going to come over here to my segments. And if I look at this, the outline of the sewing machine is artwork. And it's going to look better if I actually use an outline around that. So I'm going to select it. I'm going to come down to the bottom. I could use a run stitch, a motif stitch. You could use any of these. I'm going to do a run stitch because I've tried it out with the run plus. And I'm going to use run plus. I'm going to select a bean style. And I like it real dense. So I'm going to use a seven repeat style and hit apply. It'll look basically just like a run stitch on your... Uh, screen but when it sews out it's really nice. Now I don't really want to see this artwork anymore so easy way to turn that artwork off is this little eyeball is open. If you click right on that eyeball it turns that artwork off. So now you can just see the stitch representations. Now let's look at it under 3D mode by clicking on the 3D and it looks pretty nice. That's exactly what I want it to look like. Now um, if you have some of these particular, um, let's put it back to 3D. If you have some of these letterings, or whatever, aren't exactly where you want, I'm going to show you an easy way, like this bobbin right here. I'm going to select bobbin, and I am actually going to scroll forward to um, move it, move it a little larger. And then if I hit this magnifying glass and hit the space bar, I can actually drag and pan wherever I want. So that magnifying turned into a little grabber hand. And now if I hit the space bar again, it's back to um, a normal arrow. But I'm going to come up here to my select tool, select it, and I'm going to turn off this pan there's a little hand here now. It used to be a magnifying, so I'm going to click down below there and hit the magnifier. And then come up here and hit the select tool. Now I have the select tool I want. This is highlighted, and I could pick it up and drag it to where I wanted. Or I can hit the control key and then the arrows. So I'm going to, the arrow keys nudge it just a fraction at a time. And I can get it exactly where I want, even if I have a shaky hand on the mouse that I can get that particular part of the design exactly where I want it. It's still heading into this one right here, so I'm gonna move it to hit control, I'm gonna move it to the left a little bit further to get it exactly where I want. So this gives you the total control. Of, you can select anything and then just <clears throat> drop it a little bit up here. This might fit up into that space really nice, and I'm gonna nudge it by hitting control, I'm going to up arrow, and it moves it just a fraction. I don't know how much of a millimeter, but it's just a nice little nudge. So you can you really could get OCD about this, put everything right where it's at. Uh, so this is a really cool feature. Again, it is the word play, and you can select the default shapes in there and put any type of words in there and uh, get yourself a personalized um, type of towel or saying. So now I'm going to open up another blank workspace, little piece of paper, and I'm going to show you how to add a shape to the word plays shapes. So I'm going to go over here to this green little flower where it has custom shapes. I've actually built some things and added it to my custom shapes. So this bottle, that's a custom shape. If you look through your custom shapes, you probably don't have this. I built that. Uh, just by bringing in a uh, design and then clicking around it, or you can actually do auto-digitizing uh, in artwork. 
but it's in a fill. It comes in as a fill. So I'm going to deselect the fill button and hit apply. So now I have just an outline. I found that if you try to do word play shapes with multiple uh, parts to them, so this is just one part. If it had two or three artworks to this, word play is not going to, it's not going to go in as a word play shape. All right. So I'm going to select this bottle. And now in our tools, I'm going to left click on tools and it has all these different things. So I could color play theme creator. I could save as a word play shape. So I'm going to hit save as word play shape. Left click on that. Ask me for a name. I'm going to call it bottle. And as long as I didn't have one saved as a bottle already, it will take it. If I do, it's going to say, do you want to replace it? So now it is in my wordplay shapes. Let's go see if it really is. So I'm going to go up to wordplay. And when that opens up, drop down here and bottle. There it is. So now I could put all my great little words in here like beer and then if I I'm gonna backspace hit enter I could say IPA enter I could do micro brew that's a bubble with it so and I could put brew and then again you could pick whatever you wanted in there that's not gonna be a good one ghostly is gonna be awful in there and what's nice about this, see how some of these letters are just run letters? The uh, software, when it gets down to this 10% size, it will use a run stitch in there to make the lettering look good instead of just. Now, I want all these letters to go across like a label, so I'm going to deselect angle. I'm just going to hit horizontal. You could hit vertical also, but that's not going to look good, and diagonal's not going to look good. So uh, let's, let's let this generate, see what we get. And this is going to be fairly small, so a lot of those things I picked as far as the uh, uh, size of lettering, which is an inch high, won't fit in there. So we'll see what uh, the software figures out to put in there. Anyway, it's, uh, you know, again, this is total control software. You have the ability to build things, to save things, to, you know, again, make it, make it your own embroidered design. And uh, let's see what we come up with here. And uh, again, if uh, you want to order any of my gadgets, I have a Shopify account at bernina-jeff.myshopify.com. And I uh, have a whole bunch of sewing gadgets, mostly pertain to uh, Bernina's, but not only. I have a special oiler with an oil tip. I have uh, just a variety of 23 or so items on that Shopify account and you can order them. I even ship to Canada now. So here we go. We're almost done with this uh, build and let's see what we get. And I was correct. There was not a lot of space in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the size of this bottle to 4.5 and then it's an inch and a half wide. Uh, let's even make it eight inches tall. Now it's two and a half inches. And I'm going to hit OK. And let's hit Generate. And now it's going to generate based upon the size of that bottle. And remember on the very first one I did, we checked the size. Well, I was in a hurry. I forgot to check that size. And if we want to see it in 3D, when it gets all populated and finished generating, uh, it'll be in 3D. Uh, so. Let's take a look at this when it's done, and uh, again, check out my other YouTubes. I have other FTCU YouTubes, and i uh, tried to do one every month. I missed last month. Um, do check out Trevor Conquer Goods and all the other weekly uh, uh, videos, because they have a wealth of information, and uh, this uh, R&K and Floriani does a a lot of work in uh, keeping us educated. So there it is. It looks quite a bit different. Let's undo 3D view. And there we go. And let's hit OK. We'll put that into our workspace. And 
then you can save this to whatever format you use on your sewing machine. And you know, this one looks pretty busy. You probably, I probably would try something a, a little bit different. However, that's how we can uh, edit and do things ourselves. So if I wanted to see what's in this little top area, I can hit my magnifying glass and drag a box around it and hit my select tool. And I actually can select this. Uh, you know, I can't tell if I'm selecting that particular item. There we go, let's just select that part. And I actually could make that smaller or just delete it. I hit the delete key, you know, get rid of that. I can hit this guy, get rid of that. So you actually can weed out some of this that's going on. And if I uh, hit my select tool and I hit this, this IPA right here, I can move him to where I want. So it does fill based upon the software, but then you can actually change and edit as you go. So thank you very much. This is Jeff at High Fashion Sewing, 970-256-1293, Colorado Mountain Standard Time. And uh, feel free to uh, check out our sites. And my website is highfashion, that's spelled H-I-fashion-gj.com. Thanks.